Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Peter here. Today's video, I thought we would have a little read of the new Perfume Guide 2018, and I'm going to kind of do the best and the worst of. I'm not going to cover the whole book, so if you don't want any spoilers, if, if you're planning on buying it and you don't want to hear some of the funny stuff, then skip this video. Um, if you want to hear the the worst and the best from the guide, I'll I'll give you some highlights in this video. Some of them are, are quite amusing, although I feel a little bit sorry for the, some of the perfumers. <laughs> I've got my imaginary author's bookmark here, Falling Into the Sea. He gave an, kind of an okay review of that one. So the first one here happens to be a... I've marked this book already with, with the little highlights. So the first on the almost is this like almost the first page pretty much is the second page of the reviews one star review I can't pronounce the brand or the name so I'll put that up on the screen and it's a one star review described as sweaty Uranus and it reads wear this grow a messy beard sit on a park bench talk loudly to yourself and answer back and soon enough they'll take you away hose you down for free and give you warm soup. So that that's that's a pretty good review. He reviews a lot of Roja in this book, Roja Dove, and he's not a Roja fan by the look of it. <laughs> so the first one here is for Paul Femme. Uh, he gave it two stars, which is bad. So I'll break down the star rating. You've got one star, which just means avoid. Two star is bad. Three star is good. Four star is like pretty good, um, and then five star is masterpiece. So for Roger Dove Parfum, two star. So this is bad. Roger Dove's perfumes are art directed by him. He claims to be the world's most respected perfumer, and compounded by Agraville. I can't. I'm not sure if I pronounce that correct. Although I actually thought it was Robertet that made his fragrances. Anyway, a minor player in the fine fragrance industry. Um, blah, 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 blah. So basically, he's highlighting the fact that Roger actually isn't a perfumer and that they're created for him by a compound house. Reading a lot of the reviews for, for Roger in this book, I feel like maybe that has made him a little bit biased against Roger. Some of the ones that I thought are actually fairly decently blended, even though he didn't make them himself, they're still, you know, fairly decent fragrances. He gives either, well, generally he gives poor reviews to all of them. <laughs> so I think he just doesn't like him personally, which is kind of, I understand why I'm not the biggest fan of him either. But it shouldn't, um, if, you, if you're going to review, I, 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 you shouldn't really be biased, you should take that out of the equation. But that's difficult for anyone, I suppose. So there are a few five-star reviews, which stands for Masterpiece. The first one I flipped to here, I, I can't pronounce this either, Azadine Alea. So they gave this a five-star review and classed it as a pepper suede. It's quite a long review, it's half a page long, so I'm not going to read all of that. Ultimately, it converges to an enigmatic, dry, salty accord, less of a dry down and more of a poignant memory of a fragrance as if you were smelling it on your clothes days after an extraordinary evening. So basically to sum this up is that he never got a chance to fly on the Concorde before it was before it had the crash and then they, they weren't flown anymore. But he went in a museum or something like that, yeah, in a museum in Seattle and actually went inside and, and smelled inside this Concorde and he's basically saying that this perfume gave him a memory straight away of the smell of the inside of a Concorde and that's why he likes it so much so for him it was a memory trip that he appreciated and that's why it's basically got a five-star review here are some Roger Dove reviews he uses the word routine quite a lot so Amber A. Oud or Amber Oud was given a two-star which means bad and he simply describes it as a routine woody fruity rose that's it. He uses the routine word quite often. He makes it kind of clear that he's not a huge fan of Francis Kirkjean. He basically says that Kirkjean only does his good work when he's being 
directed by some kind of creative director for some other brand he was working for and being pestered to make something better and basically insinuates that most of his own brand is boring and, and just not very good. So Amaris Hom here has got a one star review which means avoid. Horrifically rough version of Lamal, powerful enough that I actually feel pain smelling it. If you hate my guts, dab this on and join me in a small, inescapable space. <laughs> That's funny. So we have another Maison Francis Cochon review, One Star, which is a void, which is basically, a, you know, a terrible perfume. Aqua Vitae, an unpleasant modern core of functional smelling musks and sweet woody notes that veer this eau de cologne in the direction of an off-brand fabric softener with a weird note of celery. The Fort version smells rather more of the famous scent of a Cabbage Patch Kid doll. One star. Oud Satin Mood. Francis Kirkjean. This is the one I own. And I think it's very good. He gave it a one star. An interesting botch. The two sides of this fragrance, an almond biscuit gourmand and a fruity green rose, do not belong in the same room together. The better quality rose in the extract makes the problem more glaring, whereas the eau de parfum merely smells disconnected. And I'm sorry, was there supposed to be oud? So, one star is a void. I actually think oud satin oud is, is quite beautifully done. It has um, notes of ionones, which give it this lovely kind of violet, irisy touch. And yeah, there is an almondy, vanillary smoothness to it. It's sweet. I think it's lovely. I think it's beautiful. I think it smells great on a woman. It's more feminine. Very, very strong. Very long lasting. But he gives it a one star review and says it's crap. <laughs> so I don't agree with everything he says. He's pretty harsh on a lot of them. Another five star review is for the new Ochre du Desert by Andy Tower. That's the latest version of Le Air du Desert Marocain. I never smelled it, but he gave that five star and gives it quite a hefty long review. Uh, he also um, gave the original Laird of Desert Marocain a five star in the original book and he wore it for his wedding day as well so he's a big fan of Andy Tower. He gives Creed Aventus a four star and says it turns out to be a very nice dry citrusy fruity with an impressive ability to radiate a warm spicy aura all around. Good stuff. So for Byredo Baudelier I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. One star, so this is terrible. Loud, cheap-smelling, invasive oriental. So he does a lot of these kind of one-line reviews where he just destroys them in basically a couple of words. <laughs> Black Opium by Yves Saint Laurent, he gave a one star to and gave it a one and a half page long review. It starts here at the bottom. All of this and all of that, all just on black opium of why he doesn't like it. He, he basically um, talks about trends and knockoffs and copying and just bunging loads of synthetics together. It's, uh, he's just not impressed with that one. Which is funny because it's one of a, one of the kind of the best-selling women's fragrances. It's very popular. So this one, Auto Palissy, Bocanera. Oh god, this one's uh, <laughs> this one's brutal. If one wanted a fragrance to sum up at one sniff the epic fail of bullshit niche, this would be it. On 138 euros for 50 milliliters of something that smells like the stuff they use to clean the toilets on a TGV. One star, avoid. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, I posted that on Instagram and I put the tag about, I guess he's not spelled Fuang Dang yet. Because um, my title for bullshit niche would go to them for having the audacity to suspend or charge £400 a bottle for oud that smells of rubbery synthetic fruits. So maybe he's not smelled those yet, but that'll be interesting if he uh, reviews those in the next book. <laughs> but I, I, I feel with that one, to be fair, he's not taking into consideration the idea of the actual concept of the brand. Auto policy is designed around 
really peculiar um, smells going back to body parts, body odors, armpits, you, you name it. If you can think of it on your body, it's in autopolicy. So they're not meant to smell pleasant, particularly. They're definitely not designed to be mass appealing or popular. So he's not really taken into consideration the thought process of what the brand is trying to artistically put forward. So the fact that it smells bad to him, I, I think that's almost kind of the point of the brand in the way. So he's not really taken that into consideration, I don't think. Um, anyway art is subjective like that obviously there's some art like there's this famous art piece that's literally an upside down urinal with some writing on it uh, and that's considered modern art and i just shake my head and think what what, what is wrong with people <laughs> but anyway um kate partake imaginary authors this is one that i like personally it's one of my favorites from josh mayer in his collection the only one i own from imaginary authors he gave it a two star, which is bad. Imaginary w Authors is the work of art director Josh May. Art director. That that inc that term, um, the term art director kind of suggests that Josh doesn't make his own fragrance. Um, maybe that's a slip of terminology there. Described as loving all things exquisite, be it whiskey, literature, cuisine, cigars, or music, balancing the strong aversion to pretentious over -ex -extravagant extravagance, the fragrance reflects at least part of this outlook and are straightforward, though perhaps lacking depth and mystery. But then so are whiskey and cigars. They are not all that exquisite and tend more towards the cheap and cheerful. Cape Heartache is one of an endless stream of woody green earthy fragrances that populate the niche style and represent a townie's idea of a fir forest, a sort of olfactory Albert Beardstite painting, but without the romantic awe. Uh, he's not impressed. Okay, so the next one, Clean Blossom by Clean. Two star review. I suspect the hardest part of composing something like this is staying awake. <laughs> Oh, imagine if you were the perfumer. Okay, uh, five star. This is by the Zoo Club Design, and it's classed as a rubber honey. So this is full marks. He just he says this is a masterpiece. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's it's like a half over half page review here. He says it's reminiscent of Bulgari Black, um, but with a golden kind of colour to it. I never smelled it, so I've no idea. But he says it's a masterpiece, so maybe check that one out, possibly. Another series of Roger Dove reviews, all two star. Creation E pour Femme, Roger Dove, two star. Routine, floral. Creation E pour Homme, two star. Sub declaration, mishmash. Creation R pour Femme, two star. 1970s Woody Sheeper in the manner of Givenchy, three. Creation R pour Homme, two star. Routine, Woody Masculine. So you can see he's not a fan of Roger at all. Pretty much all of the ones from Roger have got two star in this book. Donna Margarita Pantheon, one star, a void. A hideous fake tuberose with fake Narcissus and fake Jasmine thrown in. <laughs> uh, Zoologist is in here again, Dragonfly, two star, so that's um, bad. The sort of almond floral scent typical typical of baby powder and disposable diapers, a smell I don't miss. Another zoologist, elephant, another two star, so that's bad. Not crazy about this one, milky green floral, competently done, but a bit amorphous and aimless. The thing I didn't like about elephant was cis-3 hexanol that's used, which gives the effect of um, green and leaves but it smells um, very, I, it, I, I don't like the way it smells. It's sharp and not pleasant f to me. Two stars, he, he does give a few zoologists uh, praise that he's just a few that he doesn't like. Elysium Pohon, Rocher Dove, two star. Trivial, cheap smelling, woody lime thing. And Elysium's got a lot of praise with the other reviewers. When I smelled it, I just thought it it was trying to emulate kind of the more mainstream designer 
freshies, um, something along the lines of Bleu de Chanel and Sauvage, but like a niche version of them, uh, coining in on that kind of same similar trend. Um, but he's describing it as trivial and cheap smelling, two star rating. Every Storm a Serenade by Imaginary Authors. This is one that I didn't like. It uses a note of Cologne, which is kind of like a watery synthetic molecule that's used in Izzy Mayaki, the original. But he's mixed it with kind of vetiver and stuff that makes it smell dirty. So to me, it smelled like tepid, dirty water or like a stagnant pool by the sea or something. It just smelled off to me. But he's given it a two star and says a strange composition with an unwelcome top note suggesting perfume damaged by sunlight exposure followed by a rather angular and sour marine vetiver accord not bad but not not bad but neither particularly interesting nor pleasant falling into the sea which is the bookmark i have i actually quite like falling into the sea and i almost bought it but i never fell in love with it i just thought it was quite nice he gives it a three star which is good an interesting accord reminiscent of fresh lemons squeezed onto raw oysters. Clever and pleasant, but could have done with a bit more subtlety and formula cost in the dry down. So he's inferring that it's cheap in the dry down. I don't get the oyster thing at all, actually. Fought a man layer in here a few times. They get excellent reviews, really good. Fate Salt and Mehmed, which is one of my favourites in my collection I wear all the time. It has got four star review. He praises it. It says it's very well done, very good indeed, is his words. He likes that one. He also really likes um, Harim Rose, which I also own. SP Parfums gets a bit of a hard time in this book. SP Parfums is Sven, but he gets a one-star review for Funfair, which is described as a mouldy pastry. And it reads, So surprisingly foul that I laughed hard enough to weep. Oh my good lord. Oh, poor Sven. So surprisingly foul that I laughed hard enough to weep. Having smelled all three fragrances we received from SP Parfums, I can only conclude that, as with blowflies and honeybees, we and the art director of these scents fundamentally, possibly even biologically, disagree on what smells good. If you enjoy these fragrances, you will likely think this book is bullshit. <laughs> That we are that we, that we are anosmic and that we have zero taste in perfume and I accept the inevitability of your judgment. Oh dear. I might be wrong, but I think um the one he's referring to is is one of the writers for Fragrantica. Is it Miguel? And that was a collaboration where he actually was the kind of the creative director, the art director that kind of told how the fragrance should be and it was kind of his project with with Sven from SP Parfums um, so I'd imagine Miguel is probably uh, not happy there I might be wrong there I'll have to uh, check Penhaligans gets a one star review for Halfetti a truly ghastly confection of pastry and musk one of the worst fragrances ever Harim Rose by Forte Manley, four star review, which is excellent. When I smelled Harim Rose, I realized I had been looking for something like this for a long time. A fresh, soft, masculine rose in a Victorian style of ham and bouquet penhaligans, reportedly originally from 1872, but without extraneous geranium green notes and barbershop musks. Just face cream softness all the way through, lovely. The, the one I wear the most and my favourite from Fort Manley is actually Mr. Boshnikov's Purple Hat. And he doesn't like that one quite as much. He still says it's good. He gives it, I think he gave it a three star, but it wasn't, um, wasn't his favourite one. So another one he gave a five star review, so he thinks this is a masterpiece, is by Lancome. And it's called Jasmine's Marzipan by Dominique Ropion. Um, I won't give too much away, apart from that it smells of jasmine and marzipan, and he thinks it's a masterpiece. So, I've never smelled that one. Another one by SP Parfums called Lisbon Blues, and this gets a one star, described as galbanum cleaner. 
it gives me no pleasure to rate so lowly a perfume made by a small niche outfit and directed by a person passionate about his work, but alas, my readership relies on me. The team at SP Parfums have managed to take a number of high-quality, green, resinous materials, mostly obviously galbanum, combine them with florals and make them smell not like vent vert, but instead like that green gel that comes out of a bottle shaped like a duck, which is supposed to rid your toilet of urine stains. <laughs> Sorry for laughing, but oh my good lord. Um, that's, that, that, uh, there's no way around that. It's, it's hilarious, but it's offensive. If, you, if you're the person that made that, it's offensive. Ah. <laughs> uh. I hope if he ever reviews mine one day and he gives me a one star that it's equally hilarious at least that you can laugh about it. Uh, it's it's not so bad when it's at least funny. So another five star review is Le Mat by Menditolosa and describes as a nutmeg immortel, gives it a five star rating and it's almost a half page review so I'm not going to read that one. I do have a sample of it and to be honest I wasn't that bothered by it. Um, I'll, well, I will give it a wearing, uh, I might review that one. Um, five star. If you've got Le Mat, uh, let me know in the in the description below. Maybe, maybe I, I only smelled it from the dab stick, I really didn't give it much time yet. And I think we'll finish up here. This is the most expensive fragrance so far in this book, Roger Hort Lux. This is, I believe, his signature one with the gold flakes in. It's well over a thousand pounds. It's like ridiculously expensive. Two star review, which is bad. Boring, retro, woody floral of the kind you'd expect to find in a small mall, half empty, unlabeled bottle in a French flea market. <laughs> oh, Roger must be, must be fuming. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the, the fun reading there. Just some highlights of the best and the worst of the book. I don't feel so bad with some of the reviews that I've done in the past. I, f I think I'm I'm not that harsh actually anymore reading some of those. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you again next time with another one. Take care guys. Bye bye.